começa conversando com o filósofo e psicanalista Slavo Zizek, polêmico pensador esloveno que também se aventura pelo cinema, veio ao Brasil para lançar os livros, primeiro como tragédia, depois como farsa e em defesa das causas perdidas. You are the boss. No, I'm not the boss. I like it. No, it must be clear who is the boss. Uh, Then it's the anarchy. Yes. I think I am here a conservative communist. Democracy is good if you know who is the boss. <laughs> the problem for us is not are our desires satisfied or not. The problem is how do we know what we desire? Uh, you use different kinds of knowledge to create your fears. Psychoanalysis, literature, movies. Uh, why is this multiplicity is important for philosophy nowadays? Uh, I agree with the idea of Alain Badiou that philosophy can never function in itself. It has to be linked to what Badiou calls one of its conditions. For Badiou at least it's e either love or art and so on or, or politics or science, whatever. So, Again, this is a very nice idea that philosophy is, in its very core, parasitic. It doesn't bring or generate a truth in itself. It just reflects on the conditions of other discourses or practices of truth. So, to propose the psychoanalytic formula, the violent attacks of the birds are obviously explosive outburst of maternal superego, of the maternal figure preventing, trying to prevent sexual relationship. So the birds are raw incestuous energy. References was, as we always know, art. From Plato, who was against art, but nonetheless his whole metaphysics of Plato is marked by this tension towards art. And even today, I'm more for, for Plato than for Aristotle. I think that from our experience of the last decades, Plato's idea that, you know, poets are dangerous, they should be thrown out of the polis, the city, is not as stupid as it may appear. Why? Okay, here is my personal almost experience, coming from ex-Yugoslavia, where we all know there was a terrible civil war in the early 90s, mm -hmm. but, sorry, but behind this war, in some sense, founding it, providing ideological coordinates, there were poets, great national poets. Mm -hmm. No wonder that the leader of Bosnian Serbs, who is now in Hague as a war criminal, was Radovan Karadzic, who was before a well-known poet. It needs on, not only them, other Yugoslav nations, uh, Croats, Serbs, Slovenes, also had poets who were not as bad as Karadzic, but maybe in a way even worse. You know why? Because they didn't directly engage in politics. They pretend, oh, our hands are clean. You know, poetry is for me in this sense very ambiguous. So I think we should be careful with poets. We should not fall into this mythology yes. that poets will provide a deeper wisdom, maybe, but not necessarily. Let me give an example which is also maybe known here. You know that movie director from ex-Yugoslavia, Emir Kusturica? Did you see his still best-known film, Underground? Underground, yes. It's pure mythology. What is the, the uh, impression of Yugoslavia that you get there, that people do all the time three things. They drink, they kill, and they make love, they sex. This, kind, this idea of a crazy piece of the world where we are in an eternal orgy, no? Sorry, but this is not Balkan. This is what, this is the Western myth of Balkan. And I think he's doing the worst thing here possible like giving to the West what the West wants to see in Balkan. Cinema is the ultimate pervert art. It doesn't give you what you desire. It tells you how to desire. You talked about a film called uh, Children of Men, and there is a scene from this movie with an artist in his ivory tower uh, uh, pretending that's not happening in the world. What do you think about this kind of posture? For me, on the art, no, the true ivory tower is not some 
abstract artist doing music that nobody almost wants to listen. Yeah. So to be brutal with one, the true ivory tower is for me Paolo Coelho here, no? This is the true ivory tower. Total pseudo-spiritual mystification and so on. He is, in this sense, if we mean by ivory tower that art, art, if it is art in this case, yes. offers you a false escape from social problems and so on, I would worry much more about this type of new age pseudo-spiritual art than even of the most abstract music or painting or whatever. I would like you to talk about Helio. It's yeah. also a, a big reference for you. Which fiction writers are closer to his ideas? The thing we should ask is not what Hegel still has to tell us, but what we have to tell Hegel. That is to say, how our society would have looked from Hegel's eyes. I'm here radically Hegelian, but this I mean, this is the topic of book, the big fat book that I'm finishing now. I'm, I'm even ready to go back from Marx to Hegel. I think that the situation in which we are today, which means, let's face it, the end of the communist dream. I'm still a communist, but I mean the way we saw communism in the 20th century. That epoch is over. So I think we have to rethink theoretical foundation. Yeah. We have also, we cannot play these games, you know, Marxist idea was good, only realization was bad. This is naive. Okay. There must have been something theoretically not radical enough in Marx. So I think we should go back to uh, Hegel. Louis Althusser, a Marxist, yes. gave a good model where he said that with practically all great artists, they have all, of course, an ideological project. But their artistic practice, if you really read them, in a way undermines their own project. For example, precisely Henry James. Yeah. It's much more ambiguous than it may appear. Of course, consciously, he was probably a stupid, conservative, pro-British snob. Yeah. But the way I try to read, for me, his best novel, uh, uh, Wings of the Dove, it's incredible. If you really read what he... He was artistically honest. He was ready to follow his artistic logic whenever it goes. This is why me and Alain Badiou like Wagner. Politically, Wagner was an opportunist, late in his life, anti-Semitic. But look at his works. You get a totally different message. What can I say? Um, I, I understand Hitler. I'm still for him at this level, for Lance for Trier. I think we... Sh why do people think, you know? I think that... Why do people think that if you look at a person of the artist, that you will discover some deep key secret? I like those who claim that, on the contrary, with really great artists, uh, you shouldn't interpret their work based on their private life. I'm afraid of that stupid man. And it is not going to hit us. You promise? I think we should do exactly the opposite. It's the li life can be explained by work. Work is the substance, and there is more in the work than in life. Uh, which is why, for example, I hate not this type of interview, but when they want to me to do with me this kind of an in-depth interview, blah blah, asking me about how I started to study. But I tell them everything is, okay, I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying the best of me, what I did, is in my books. You know what you should do? Uh, don't put subtitles, but put it that I start talking and then my voice goes back and somebody reads it, you know why? Because in this way you can put lies into my mouth, you know what I mean? You can make me that whatever you want. Okay, no, thank, no, you. thank you very much. Thank uh, you, thank nice you.